Hi Founders fans, Jason here, and today I'm going to talk about someone who I actually have mentioned in my previous two videos, and that is Edward Rutledge. Now, I had mentioned him a few days back on Friday when I was talking about the two Thomas Lynches, and I wasn't sure if Edward Rutledge or Thomas Lynch Jr. was the youngest member uh, of the Continental Congress to sign the Declaration of Independence. I have confirmed that Edward Rutledge was the youngest member. Sorry, Thomas Lynch. Uh, and I also mentioned him yesterday when I talked about his brother, John Rutledge, who became, among other things, Chief Justice of the United States. Now, uh, Edward Rutledge didn't quite have the career his brother did, uh, but he did. He was a revolutionary. He was uh, very much against Great Britain and their uh, hostilities. Um, but he had a, a few more interesting, uh, a few more interesting stories. Well, one very interesting story. But first of all, when they went to the uh, Continental Congress, again, Thomas Rutledge, somehow, even though he was only 26 when he went, uh, he was the leader of the South Carolina delegation, which is strange. <laughs> he did. He actually is the one who replaced his brother, John, when John was elected governor. Now, Edward was, um, at first, uh, you may have seen the John Adams miniseries on HBO from about a decade ago, which is one of the most accurate portrayals of the American Revolution you can watch. It's about 10 hours long, but if you haven't seen it, you know, set some time in your life aside. If you're watching this video, you clearly like the American Revolution, and I can't recommend that enough. It is unbelievable the detail they paid attention to. Now, they were a little misleading uh, with, with Edward Rutledge. Edward Rutledge was the man in that... Uh, that show from South Carolina who was nervous about independence, who needed some smooth talking from Adams and Ben Franklin. Uh, in the show, they kind of imply that he was more concerned about independence being unanimous than anything else. Um, in real life, he was nervous about independence, but he wanted a guarantee that slavery wouldn't be made illegal, which... Unfortunately, it was what many of the southern states' economies were based on, and had Thomas Jefferson gotten his way with his initial draft of the Declaration of Independence, uh, they would have, they would have blamed the king for slavery, and it may very well have been kind of destroyed. Now, that's a speculation. There's that's a whole other video of that conversation, um, but Rutledge was afraid that war was bad enough. For the economy. War is good for economies, but war is bad enough for South Carolina. And to have just literally the workforce ripped out from under the employers, quote-unquote, uh, would have destroyed the economy, and he was concerned about that. Uh, I don't want to say fortunately. Fortunately for him, unfortunately for, you know, the scourge that was slavery, uh, that he was promised, no, we're not just going to, we're not just going to do that to you. Not that at the time they could have, it wouldn't be for another, what, 13 years until the Constitution had been ratified that that even could have happened because the states were acting independently, colonies at that point were acting independently. Um, but the real interesting story about Edward Rutledge is when uh, General Howe came with, and, and his brother, Admiral Howe, came with the might of the British Army and Navy, and they had the Battle of Long Island and took over Long Island. And then they were poised to take over Manhattan. But first, Howe said, uh, let's, let's negotiate. Maybe, maybe we can find a truce, so we don't have to have a long, extended, bloody war. We were so recently brethren, maybe we can cool it. Uh, and he called a peace conference, what became known as the Staten Island Peace Conference, where Howe actually met, I should say, he had attempted to meet with Washington on several occasions, but since he wouldn't call him General Washington, uh, Washington would not, was not cool with that. Um, and uh, this was just after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, so the states now consider themselves independent. They, but they call, he says, hey, let's meet up at Staten Island. So Benjamin Franklin... John Adams, and Edward Rutledge, who were at the time considered some of the most important people at the Continental Congress, all agreed to go to Staten Island and meet with General Howe. Now, this is the famous night, we've all heard the story how uh, 
uh, John Adams and Ben Franklin are sharing a bedroom, and one of them wants the window open because it's too hot and goes to sleep, and the other one gets up and closes the window because it's too cold and goes to sleep, and that goes on all night, and neither of them got any sleep. That's a fairly famous story from the Revolution. Um, uh, Edward Rutledge was there with them. I am not entirely sure. I looked into it, and I couldn't find... It, either A, was Edward Rutledge just in the room sleeping through all of this, or did somehow the 26-year-old Rutledge get his own room while John Adams in his mid-40s and Franklin uh, approaching 70? <laughs> like, how did Franklin not be the one that got his own room? If any of you have any information on that story, I would love to know why Edward Rutledge was not the one in the room with John Adams. Um, but anyway, they have this peace conference. Unfortunately, all Howe could do was offer pardons. And he did say, hey, if you end the war, we'll pardon you. And they were like, no, man, that's missing the point here. <laughs> You've kind of missed the whole thing. So, unfortunately, the Staten Island Peace Conference nah, did not work out with the truth that... I mean, Howe had hopes for it. Franklin, or, uh, or Adams actually had written going in that, like, this is a decoy. Like, this is not serious. They're not taking us seriously. And in hindsight, he was pretty much right. Although it is interesting to note that this is really the first time John Adams finds himself in a diplomatic position. Which, of course, he, as well as Franklin, would later spend so much time doing in Europe. Now, as for Rutledge, this is really where his place in the national scene ends. He removes himself to back to South Carolina, and he spends quite a amount of time working on the South Carolina government, uh, most of it in the South Carolina House, eventually moves up to the Senate, and then actually he becomes governor of South Carolina. Fortunately, he dies still fairly young, uh, in you know tw uh, late 40s, uh, while he's governor. The rumor has it that when he heard that George Washington had passed away, he was so taken <laughs> that he died. That's probably not true. Uh, he suffered from gout, which was a much more fatal disease then than it is really considered today. It still can be, but... And that is the not-so-exciting conclusion of Charles... Uh, I'm sorry, Edward Rutledge's life. Um, if you had any questions, please let me know. If you wanted to like this video, I would appreciate it. Uh, and I will keep it short and sweet, and we will see you tomorrow.